Hey guys, this is Chris, Stratomedic Delaware, and we are going to go through APBA Baseball. Figure we'll do a little uh, intro, kind of go through the rules, do some playing of the game, so that way you guys can see how it works. Uh, APBA has had a few hits over the past couple of weeks. I've been on a little bit of a retreat from the channel playing some APBA, catching up on it, and also uh, getting into the football game. I finally, well, the guy that I got the 1984 APBA football cards from, and you saw the extra stuff that came with it, I uh, contacted him back through APB, uh, through EB, eBay, and um, he said that he had some of the big cards, and he was just going to ship them to me, and when they get here in the next day or two, I'll have the shipping amount, so I'm going to send him the payment back, so I'm getting the old big thick cardboard tables that you could shingle a shack with so looking forward to getting that and we'll put a football video out it's not going to be a current football video it's going to be using old rules it's going to be using old game components but yeah i'll do a football video at some point but i figured i would get the baseball i've got it i've had it pretty well in hand but i wanted to go ahead and show this to you guys so You'll see all the stuff that comes in it if you go online or if you watch any of the unboxing videos that are out there. Um, but we have a rule book. And it has got rules. Lots of rules. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through the rules. And there's not much for the basic game. Um, that's it really I mean basic game is this that's what you need in order to play there's optional rules for advanced which I'm going to learn and I'm going to start to use um, but we're just going to go through the basic stuff right now and get to the game quicker that way so for those of you who are not familiar with APBA you use two dice um, you roll the dice you don't add them together you read the red as the tens and the white as the ones and your APBA standard looking APBA card football, baseball, basketball, anything, you name it. It's going to look like that one right there, where it's going to have the die result listed in black, and then any possible play results, as far as looking on tables and such, are going to be in red. So let's say you roll a 1-4, um, you're going to look at 30 for the particular play. Um, doubles are really good. Um, in most games like this, um, doubles are going to be a higher, a lower number, which is a better result. Uh, sometimes it's a middling number, but like in the football game, that's really good. Say you roll 66s. Um, for Severino, that's a 7 if he's batting course for pitchers in the baseball game. There are no pitcher cards. They use pitcher grades. But anybody who is batting, 1 home run so 66 is are good so let's go ahead and go through the rules since we have our two uh, participants here to help demonstrate what we might find on the cards let's do that on let's look through the cards before we continue uh, your hitters cards we'll take uh, Brett Gardner here for example what you're going to see on newer sets of cards not anything printed 20 25 years ago but anything recent um, you're going to have a uh, baseball master game um, symbols up here, which I'm not using those. I'm just playing a basic game. I tried to maybe look at it last night for the master game, and oh, it looks like headache. I thought Stratomatic uh, super advanced. I thought Sad V was crazy. <clears throat> so right now, not interested in learning the master game in APBA, just the plain old basic game. Have the player's car, uh, name, any nickname if there were any, so uh, Gardy, Brett Gardner. Uh, positions, you'll have position, it doesn't break it down left, center, and right, just outfielder, three. But any card sets you get are going to come with rosters and probable lineups, so it'll give you left, center, right, or you can do the research yourself, hand write it in pencil or whatever you want to on a card, what the primary positions were. Uh, running rating, F for fast, um, there will be no rating. If it's a standard speed runner, or there will be an S for slow. And that comes in for some of the running situations. 
Um, it gives you a breakdown on stats for the season that it's for, how often they played, how well they played, height, weight, where they were born, bats, throws, and which team NYA. So this is the Yankees. And then it gives you, uh, there are six possibilities here on the red die, the tens. So there are six possibilities on the white die. So it lists all the ones together. One, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then it goes to the twos. So if this is a one or a two, you're looking in this column. A three or a four, you're looking in this column. Five or a six, you're looking in this column. Then of course it gives the results. Now some batters will only have one result column in red. You're gonna read that no matter what. That I mean that's you roll one five, it's gonna be nine. That's what you're gonna read and use for the results of the at bat. Some batters will have two columns, and you will note that the second column, the numbers are a lot higher. This means it's, say, if we were to have rolled a, let's say if we were to have rolled a 1-2 for Brett Gardner, you're going to look at 25 in the results to find out how the at-bat went. If you roll a 1-1, one, one, Brett Gardner, for, that, for him it is a 0. Anytime you roll a 0 in the first result, you're going to re-roll and you're going to look at the second column. In this case, that's an 11. So you would use that for his at-bat. <clears throat> uh, it also lists uh, lefty-ready splits, which I think are cool, and I really kind of want to get into it. I want to learn that. I may do a hybrid thing where I'm adding the lefty-ready splits into it, so I really like that. I want to add the stealing into it, and I'll explain why later. It's also going to show an error rating an error frequency number down here under J. APBA games, J generally means injured. So that's what the J's are. Um, then you have for the uh, pitchers, same thing. Now this is a batting card. There are no pitchers pitching cards that's worked into the tables. But that's uh, the dice, that's the cards. So uh, let's go through the rules. Uh, we've already explained how to do that for pitchers cards. We uh, went through the outfield, uh, the fielding position, fielding rating, and running. For pitchers' cards, you have grades. So there are grades A, B, C, and D. And uh, Luis Severino is a B. Uh, it also has a fielding rating right there. So it's pitcher fielding rating one in the parentheses. Uh, some pitchers have two. There are general ranges for different positions. Outfielders are one through three. First and third basemen are three through five. Second base shortstop are five through nine. Catchers are five through nine. Pitchers are one or two. Um, <clears throat> and those general ranges are made so that way different fielding columns can be used in the results. And we'll get to that in a bit as well. <coughs> uh, getting started, select two teams or draft players uh, for each position. Choose a player card for each defensive position. And uh, we're at the top of page three in the rule book. And a designated hitter if you want one. If you're making your teams from a player pool, be sure to choose bench players and relief pitchers. Arrange your players in a batting order with the leadoff hitter on top. Tip, when choosing a leadoff hitter, look at the cards and find a player with a high on-base percentage. Not necessarily the fastest player on the team. Singles hitters with a minimum number of 13s in their first column of play result numbers are great number two hitters. Reason it says that. Um... 13s are almost always strikeouts. And I'm going to show you some of the things to look for so that way, you know, different results. You roll the dice, you, you know what to expect, and it cuts down on time getting used to the game and being able to play sooner. I'll get to that as well. However, back to it, uh, every player every player is a fielding rating located on his card next to his position, like so. Total the fielding points for the players on your team at the positions they are playing. They may have multiple positions, so you want to make sure you do it with the one they're playing. Some will play outfield and have the individual 
infield positions that they play listed separately. Use the fielding rating that directly follows the, f the position they are playing defensively. Total the fielding points for the players on your team at the positions they're playing. If your right fielder can also play first base, he has a rating of four at first base, but only one in the outfield. Sorry, he's a one if he is playing outfield. Write down the team's totals. This is your team's defensive rating, and we'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Uh, don't necessarily rule out players with low fielding ratings. They're less crucial for outfielders than they are for shortstops and catchers. Uh, reason being, your catchers, second baseman, and shortstops are 5 through 9. Those are where you get the most fielding points for your team. Those are the three positions where you really want your best guys in the field. Uh, mediocre catcher, second baseman, or shortstop is 7. It's not uncommon to have an 8, and every once in a while you're going to have a 9. Plug those guys in unless someone with a very slightly lower fielding rating is much more productive at the bat. Um, the more you play it, the more you know what the cards look like, what the results do, the better you'll be able to figure this out. And I'll show you some examples in a little bit. Uh, write both pitchers' names at the bottom right of the score sheet along with their grades. I don't use the APBA score sheet. I took one look at it and I was like, Bleh. so I'm using the payoff pitch. Familiar for you guys to follow along as well. Pick a home team or a visiting team. Some suggestions to do so. Flip a coin, roll the dice to determine. There's always rock, paper, scissors. Very interesting when you're playing with yourself. And then the visiting manager rolls the red die and the white die for his first batter. And look at that. Whoever it was, it's a leadoff home run. Double sixes. There you go. Leadoff home run for whatever team was playing. It's not going to count in my game. And then if your batter's card has two columns, uh, they'll look like this. We already went over that. Sometimes you find an asterisk after a red play result number, most frequently on the player card. There aren't any on these player cards, but you might see a red asterisk. Say, uh, there's a 14, so maybe like 14 asterisks is what you would see. And it says most frequently on a 14. When that number allows the hitter to reach first or second base, he steals the next base, if it is unoccupied, on the next pitch, which is scored a ball to the batter. Um, not every single at bat, you will score individual balls, individual strikes. Very seldom have I had that happen more than one time in an at bat, but you'll see how that works here in just a little bit. On the other hand, asterisk on a runner's on base play charts, which are the charts back here, indicates a result with two outs. So say there's a normal, it says here, ground ball to second base out at third, batter safe. It's a four or five. And then you might have parentheses, the asterisk, out four three. That means with two outs, he's not gonna go to third, he's gonna go to first, get the shore out, boom, third out, it's done. <clears throat> Leadoff hitters at bat won't take long. Individual balls and strikes are uncommon in this game, and a four-ball walk and a three-ball strikeout is about as rare as a triple play. When his at bat is over, move the card to the bottom of the pack and bring the number two hitter to the plate. Um, there's only one more round of rules before we can start playing this basic game. Um, pitching and defense. And that's got all of them in there. Cool. Let's do it. Pitching and defense. One of the great things about APBA baseball is the way fielding and pitching help decide a game. Play result outcomes 1 through 11 on the play charts are based on the pitcher's grade. So grade A, B, C, and D you will see across the top of the play charts on the subsequent pages. Uh, outcomes 12 through 42 are based on a team's fielding rating. You will see them in columns down here on the bottom two-thirds of the page. And that's based on totaling up your fielding positions. When you're batting, stick to the play result charts that apply to the opposing pitcher's rating, except when there is a 7, 8, or 11 result from the second column of a player card. Then you use the grade D pitcher column no matter the pitcher's actual grade. I had glossed over that, and now I'm going to have to try to remember that rule. I haven't been using that. Um, if you see a K, R, W, X, Y, Z, or Z, Z in parentheses on the pitcher's card, X, Y, 
Z. These are extra additional pitchers ratings, which modify different results to turn them into turn a uh, fly ball into a strikeout to boost some pitchers' stats uh, to. Uh, change a walk into two balls. Sometimes you'll find that with the Z's. <clears throat> uh, we'll go over those though. Apply those ratings to the game outcome. They change the results slightly. For example, a hard throwing pitcher will have an X or a Y rating. He's going to have more strikeouts. As some plays will have in parentheses at the end, X equals strikeout, Y equals strikeout. Da -da -da, no additional outs. Only W pitchers are hurt by their rating. They're extra wild. Occasionally, extremely good pitchers may be graded A and B or A and C. Treat them as grade A pitchers. So instead of B, you will see, for instance, maybe A and C or B and D. They, you go with the first rating listed, like if it's A and C, you will treat them, in, treat them as an A rated pitcher, A graded pitcher. Unless the grade A pitcher column results in a hit. That means the grade columns that are at the top of the page. If it results in a hit, then you use the second grade listed instead. So if it's A and C, and his A up there results in a hit, you move down to C and use that instead. Um, an asterisk right after a pitcher's grade on his card means he should be used only as a relief pitcher. Unless he has one grade on his card without an asterisk that happens, use the grade B pitcher or the grade C pitcher column instead. Now, ah, it went up the line, sorry. An asterisk right after a pitcher's grade on his card means he should be used only as a relief pitcher unless he has one grade on his card without an asterisk for starting and a second grade with an asterisk for relieving, then he can do both. Um, that's all the rules you need to know in order to play the basic game. And we cover that eh, with the cards and the dice kind of in depth in about 15 minutes. I figure, hey, let's, uh, let's play some baseball. So we're going to have the 2017 World Series that never happened, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Yankees. I was really pulling for that matchup. I thought it was going to be great. I so wanted it to happen. Nostalgia, Yankees and Dodgers, the way it used to be. Perhaps never again. We may never know. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and raise this back up here. Apologize for the glare on one corner. That may be unavertible. And let's see if we can't. Maybe arrange this so we can see what we got going on. You're going to have your rule book. It's going to have the play charts um, on the tops of each page. You're going to have a, against a, versus a grade A pitcher versus a grade B pitcher versus a grade C pitcher versus a grade D pitcher. If the pitcher on the mound, whatever his grade is, that's what column the batting team is going to look at if they have a result of 1 through 11. Results 12 through 42 depend on the defensive fielding, fielding 1, 2, and 3. How do you determine that? You total up your defensive position numbers, and then you go over here. Fielding 1 column for 41 or more, point, 41 or more team fielding points. Fielding 2 column, which is pretty common, for anywhere from 36 to 40 team fielding points. Fielding three column for 35 or fewer team fielding points. Uh, you're going to find that you may be able to squeak in a 41 um, for late game defensive substitution so that way instead of reading fielding two you may be reading fielding one in the eighth and ninth inning if you've got a really good lead less than the chances of a hit uh, in some situations substantially. Uh, play results 1 through 11. Uh, batting, pitching, phase of the play charts. Boom. Uh, 12 through 42, batting, fielding phase of the play charts. Uh, Asterix, two out result. Uh, one instant of that would be 
we're going to go over to here and find one. Uh, say fielding one, roll a 15. Single to left, runner to third. This is with a runner on second base. I'll cover that in just a moment. It occurred to me I hadn't. But single to left, runner to third. There's an asterisk, runner scores. Two out result, asterisk. So if there had been two, zero outs or one out, single to left, runner to third. Two outs, single to left, runner scores. Um, you're going to find uh, some plays are modified with pitching ratings. For instance, uh, 27. Out at first, runner holds. It's a 5-3 ground ball. However, if the pitcher rating is Y, it would be a strikeout. On uh, this one up here, pitcher rating K is a strikeout. Uh, fly out, runner holds to right field. However, if it's a K, it's a strikeout. Which charts do I look at? Very good question. And they're on the sides here. And they're on these sides here as well. However, I've modified mine so it's easier to flip back and forth the pages. I tabbed them. Now they're listed the whole way down the side of each page. I cut them off except for the page that I wanted them to be so I could grab them and move them back and forth quicker. Less cumbersome. Tip from me. Helps you play quicker. Faster through the game. Um, you have bases empty. You flip one page when you have a runner on first. When you have a runner on second, you use these. Have a runner on third base, use these. Runners at first and second. Runners at first and third. Runners at second and third. It'll say up there. It'll say on the tabs on either side. It'll say at the top of the page on either side. And all of these have grade A, grade B, grade C, grade D. Fielding one, fielding two, fielding three. 1 through 11, 12 through 42. That's on every page. Base is loaded, and on every page it gives everything over here, so that way you know. Uh, some, when you have a runner on third, you're going to have results that may have a C or a D. Uh, in these instances, the defensive player must declare whether the team is at normal double play depth or if the infield is in. Uh, you're in, say, number 12 here. It will have C, double play, runner out at home, batter out at first. So it's a 6-2-3 double play. That's with C, that's with infield in. C result, infield in. D result, infield deep, normal depth. D is a double play, batter out at first, runner out at second, other runners advance one base. 6-4-3. It's not an RBI because the defense decided to go with a double play, but it does score a run with bases loaded. And then the last few pages, you have a page for Sacrifice Bunt. Runner on first, second. Runner on third is a squeeze play. Uh, if a run constitutes game-winning run and it is the home half of the last inning, do not record any fielding credit in such an instant. There would be no play for the batter at first. Credit the batter with a single on such play. And little tips like that. And actually, it never occurred to me. I have to remember that. Uh, runners on first and second. You're going to notice something, and it's not in the basic rules. It's in the master game rules. Um, little crosses at the end here. That means that it results in a sacrifice, a ground ball going to whichever base. <clears throat> um, and it, tell, it, it always tells you who gets the assist and who gets to put out on all of these results. You don't have to worry about do that. It lays that out for you. But anytime there's a cross on these sacrifice bunts, that means that a sacrifice has occurred. Single beats out bunt runner scores, no cross. Uh, strike runner holds on third, no cross. Out of first runner scores, assist first, put out second baseman, cross. That's a sacrifice. And there's another page of sacrifice bunting. Runners on first and third is a squeeze. Second and third is a squeeze. Bases, uh, loaded bases is a squeeze. <clears throat> And the final spread is, if I can get to it, because I have to cut through the back of that thing. Come here. You're not being good. Hit and run play. Um, runner on first. Runner on first and third. 
There are some rules on some of the pages, like right here, important when number seven or eight appear in the second column of the player card, which would be that column right there, the second column. Let's see if we can get it where we can see it. There's a seven right there. When seven or eight appear in the second column of the player card, they are not subject to any grade changes described above. Um, such as single to right, runner to third, against grade A, A and C, A and B, or B. Uh, see result number 26. Well, this is saying if he's got a 7 or an 8 anywhere in his second columns, you don't do those grade changes. You stick with the result next to the die roll. And that's another one I didn't realize. I don't do hit and run much, but I'll have to remember that. So, without any further ado, 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 let's play some baseball. Show you how it's done. We're going to have, and I think I can flip the pages there. I can flip them better than that, but we're going to leave it there ish, I think. Let's do this. I didn't really set this up. This is kind of like a on a whim thing for you guys. Forgive me! <clears throat> okay, base is empty. We can see most of that. We can shuffle it if we need to. Gives most of that. Okay, let's go with this. Let's turn you down here so we can actually see what we're doing. Alrighty. That's kind of stuck there because I made it that way. Okay, here we go. We have the Yankees and the Dodgers. We're going to have Luis Severino facing Clayton Kershaw. Uh, the Yankees are the home team. Brett Gardner is, well, let's do defensively. We have at first base, Chase Headley. Uh, second base is going to be Starlin Castro. Shortstop, Didi Gregorius. Third base is going to be Ronald Torres. Uh, left fielder, Jacoby Ellsbury. Brett Gardner in center. Aaron Judge out in right. Um, yeah, catcher, Gary Sanchez. The designated hitter is going to be Matt Holliday. And as you're making up your lineup, of course, you're going to want to write the players' names. Um, some other things that I found helpful to write down as I'm making out the lineup, just for quick reference, um, whether they're fast, slow, or if they don't have anything on their card, like Aaron Judge, nothing in parentheses there, just leave it blank. So, you know, fast runner, slow runner, uh, regular speed runner. Uh, write their position they're playing, and then write the fielding number that is located after their position. Gardner is an outfielder three, Jacoby Ellsbury outfielder two, Judge outfielder three, Didi Gregorius shortstop eight, and you're going to want to write those down so that way you can total up your fielding points, which we will need to do. So we'll get around to the game eventually. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you make your lineup, and then you write down your starting pitcher. Uh, Luis Severino, things that I write to keep handy. Severino is a grade B pitcher. Um, he has an X, Y, and Z rating, pitcher rating on his card. So I write X, Y, and Z. He's a pitcher fielding one. So I'll write pitcher one. The reason I write those is so that way when the other team is at bat, I very easily know where to look in the charts. So we're going to write, say this is New York, Los Angeles batting. So I will write New York. I will write the pitcher grade that they're facing, which is B. I will do the fielding so I know which column to look at. Three, five, 8, 16, plus 14 is 30, 38, 39. So they total 39, and if you'll recall when we look over here, fielding 2 is used from 36 to 40. So they will be using fielding 2. 
and extra pitcher ratings are X, Y, and Z. And I have that handy for each team. I'm writing it big now. I generally write it smaller because each time there is either a change to a defensive playing player or to a pitcher, I will rewrite these ratings with the new ratings and draw a single line through them so that way I have this handy when that team is up. <clears throat> um, let's do it for Los Angeles. Um, I have totaled theirs. So that way whenever New York is up, I know what Los Angeles ratings are. 2, 11, 15, 19, 27, 30, 40, 42. So they are 41 or better, so they are a fielding one. So New York, when they're at bat, is going to be looking at fielding one. L.A., when they're at bat, is going to be looking at fielding two. So L.A. gets a little better because New York doesn't rely on their defense. They rely on the power of their lumber. So fielding one, and it was a 42. I also write that so that way I know if I bring in someone, say, Yasmani Grandal goes out, he's an eight. Austin Barnes comes in, he fields at a seven. Then I know I'm dropping this one, so it goes to 41. There's still a fielding one. Just have it handy. Clayton Kershaw. I wrote him down, grade A pitcher, X, Y, Z. So we write down the X, Y, Z. Uh, some things to know as far as what a roll is generally going to do, you still want to double check and make sure. Again, if you come up with a zero in their uh, first result column, you re-roll and look at the second column. Um, doubles are good. 66 is generally going to be a home run unless it's a really, really poor power batter or most of your pitchers. There are a few pitchers that can pop one, but not many. But 66 is generally going to be out of the park. Doubles are good. Um, if you roll a 13, it's probably going to be a strikeout. Right there, uh, 13. Um, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. Those are strikeouts. With one very minor exception, which I've not seen yet, so it doesn't even bear mentioning. You'll see it when you get the game, when you get the book. 14 is a walk every time, unless your pitcher has a Z or a ZZ rating on it. And there are instances where, like, say, you get away from bases empty to runner on first, where you roll a 14, base on balls, runner moot to second, batter to first. In parentheses, Z or ZZ pitcher, it's only two balls to the batter, re-roll. And sometimes you'll have the lower results down on this end down here. <coughs> Let's just put it on it so you might be able to see. Um, can we see here? It doesn't have it for that, only for bases empty. So I'm going to show you with bases empty. You have some of them right there. Uh, 36, ball. If it's a W pitcher, base on balls. 37, strike. If it's a W pitcher, base on balls. 38 is a ball. You re-roll. 39 is a strike. Uh, 40 is a foul off. 41 is an error. 42 hit by pitch. So it is conceivable you could go through an entire at-bat and determine a walk or a strikeout that way. However, those results come up so seldom in game, it's probably not never going to happen, but very highly unlikely. Uh, I wouldn't even really consider it much of a probability at all. So, we have written down our stuff. We have gone through everything. The moment has come. Let us show you how to play APBA baseball. Yes, I know it's at, but get off it. I grew up saying APBA, and I'm not going to change for anybody. I do what I want. I'm the boss of me. Ah, come here. It's APBA. Sorry, at, but I'm going to call you APBA. Just the way it's going to be. All right, here we go. And the home of the brave. 
All right, you take your hit cards in hand. You've set your lineup. You've got your nine players if you are playing National League. You've got, or if you just hate the DH like I do, but I'm going to do this since we're in New York. Um, your pitcher will be in the ninth position. And again, this is their batting card. You're going to use that just like you're going to use everybody else. DH, place them wherever you want. And let's get ready to go. Leading off, Chris Taylor for the Dodgers. Okay, so 6-4. Six, 6-4. Four. Six, four. 13. That is a strikeout. Let's go over here and check. 13, strikeout, put out catcher. Parentheses, if there's two outs, an R rating on your pitcher is a fly out to center. Fly out, put out center fielder. Uh, this is strikeout. Boom. So, Taylor K's. Severino with one. One out, top of the first. Corey Seager. Doubles are good. 5-5 five, five is an 8. Now we're going to look at, and actually that should have been done on fielding 2. Still, strikeout. Um, now it is an 8, and remember, 1 through 11 are up here in the pitcher grade columns. Severino is a B, which you can see on his card, but that's why I keep it here. It's handy. He is a B, so we're going to look in grade B pitcher. And remember, it's an 8. Go down to the 8. Fly out center field. So that is going to be 2 away. Cody Bellinger. 3-6. Has a 33 on his card. And it is fielding 2 for the Yankees. Um, you can look here. It's all the way over on this side goes the whole way across the line. So 33 is, and you can't see it down there. 33, sorry, is a pop fly out second baseman gets to put out. In parentheses, if it's a Y pitcher, it's a strikeout. Luis Severino, Y. So he strikes out two in the top of the first. All right, one, two, three go to the Dodgers. We're going to go to the bottom of the first inning, and now we're going to have uh, Clayton Kershaw, and he is going to be facing Brett Gardner, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Joe Judge. <clears throat> and again, the Dodgers are fielding one, and Clayton Kershaw is, I didn't write down his pitcher rating. He is an A. Down it down. So we'll be looking here for Kershaw, where we were looking here for Severino. We'll be looking here for the Dodgers, where we were looking here for the Yankees. Further right, better for the pitcher. Further left, better for the batter. So Brett Gardner leading off. Bases are still empty. 4 6, 13. Remember what it is? Strikeout. Make sure until you're sure. 13, strikeout. Put out catcher. There's a two-out result with an R rating for the pitcher, so it's a strikeout. It's one away. Jacoby Ellsbury comes to the plate. Kershaw, here's the windup. The pitch, 6-2, 13, and Kershaw is hot. That is going to be strikeout number two. Clayton Kershaw sets down the first two in order. Here comes Joe Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, is it going to happen here on the demo? Hasn't happened yet in any game I've played. Didn't happen, but still a good at bat. He rolls a 9. 51 is a 9. And notice, Judge doesn't have a second column. That's because these ones stand. He hit homers. <laughs> so 51 is a 9. And we are grade A against Kershaw. 9. Out of first, 6-3. If it had been a grade B pitcher, that would have made it a single. Um, the eights, uh, grade A, pop out to third, fly out to center, single to left. So it does make a difference as it goes. Um, that is the end of the first inning, though, so let's play a couple more innings so we get the really good hang of this. 
Let's go to the top of the second. Luis Severino is set to go. Go at least until a run gets scored so you can see the different tables. Justin Turner leading off for the Dodgers. He rolls a 4-2, and that's going to be a 14. Uh, fielding 2, because they had 39. 14 is that white one right there. Base on balls. Batter takes first. A pitcher with ZZ rating has only two balls against a batter, not a walk. Severino is just a single Z, so that is a walk for Turner. He is on first. The number one thing that I had a hard time with as a brand new APBA player. Runner on first. Change the table. You're going to get to a point where you're going to realize that the result does not equal what happened. So let's say you've got a runner on first and you roll and um, it's always going to say the runner goes here or there. Uh, like say, well actually a better example. Let's say you've got a runner on second base, okay? Say you have a runner on second base and you roll a seven. It says single to right. That's not a good one. You roll an eight. Out at first, runner to second. Assist third baseman, put out first baseman. You have a runner on second. Runner to second. I'm looking at the wrong chart. Runner to third. And it's a one three. Use that to remind you, let the little alarm bell go off in the back of your head, realizing that, wait, I don't have a runner going to second, I have a runner on second. I'm looking at the wrong chart, let me flip this and then consult the correct thing. So this is the number one thing that I had a problem with, was flipping these until after I'd rolled the dice, read the result, realized I was the wrong table, and then flip it and had to read it again. So just be mindful of flipping the charts when it is time. It, it takes a while getting used to, but once you do, it makes the game run much more smoothly. So where were we? Justin Turner drew a walk. No outs. Top of the second. Brings up Yasmani Grandal. Runners on first base. Runner on first base. Grandal rolls a 1-3. That is a 14 and that is base on balls, runner to second, batter to first. Z or ZZ pitcher, two balls. Severino has a Z, so it's only two balls on the batter, so we're going to roll again. Here is the 2-0 pitch from Severino. 4-1 is 24. 24 double play, 6-4-3. Shortstop to second base, second base to first. So six, four, six, four, three. That's two outs. Let's go to Yasiel Puig facing Severino. Uh, remember, and I almost forgot, bases are now empty. Change those charts. Change those charts. Makes life so much easier. It does. Change those charts. Like, move those chains, change those charts. Yes, Yel Puig, two outs, top of the first. Rolls a 33, doubles are always good. 33 is a five. We are against a grade B pitcher. Double over first base, double into right field. So, Yes, Yel Puig with a two out double, runner in scoring position. That's going to bring up Logan Forsyth. Change those charts. From base is empty, runner on first, runner on second. Different results, different situation. This is what you go with. Change those charts. Here we go, Logan Forsyth. Two outs, man on second. Severino with the pitch. 4 2, 36. Wild pitch, runner to third. Nope, fielding two. I'm sorry. Fielding two. 36. Yep, wild pitch, runner to third. Severino and Corks one. Wild pitch one. Puig goes to third. Uh, wild pitch 
switch on seven. Didn't need to write that in the batter's box for Forsyth. Doesn't matter. All right, so Forsyth with a runner on third. It seems like a lot at the offset. It really isn't. Uh, like I said, I grew up playing APBA football, and I'm used to the idea of changing charts. And once you know where to go and when to go there, it goes very, very quickly. You get used to it. it it's like nothing. So Forsyth, again, and I have these to remind myself. We're looking at grading, grade B pitcher, but fielding two will be looking here underneath the score sheet. Should it go 12 through 42? Forsyth facing Severino. Two outs, man in scoring position. Rolls a 5-3. That's a 19. A 19 is going to be the big dark one. Gets to first on an error. Runner scores E5. E5 on Teres. Runner scores. Teres with the Bafo. Change your charts. Runner on first. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, runner on first. So I need to put that back up here. Two outs. Dodgers score a run. Forsyth is on first. Jock Peterson comes to the plate. Facing Severino. Rolls a 3-5. That there is a 42. Hit by pitcher. Batter to first. Runner to second. And Severino has gone wild. A wild pitch. An error. Hit by pitch. <clears throat> I mark them down too. Give credit where credit is due. Uh, designated hitter Chase Utley batting ninth. Facing Severino. Runners on first and second. Change your charts. <laughs> See guys, when I say that, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> I'm not playing at the pace that I have gotten to be able to play, so I'm not playing with my normal um, rhythm so yeah that's why I'm not going and changing the charts but yes it happens to everybody change the charts you miss a result you want to go back and change it captain white out the boff out of that sucker otherwise just let it roll doesn't matter up to you you're the one playing the game DH Utley two outs man across first and second Severino wants to get out of the game the inning 4-1 rolls a 26 fielding two 26 is the white row. Infield fly, put out second baseman. A K pitcher, a strikeout. Severino is X, Y, Z. So that is pop out to second. Ends the inning. P4. Dodgers score a run. Let's play the Yankees at the bottom of the second. And then we will uh, give some thoughts. I'm hoping one thing comes up in this inning. Otherwise, I'll have to go searching and tell you about it. But that's okay. And it's probably my, only my one beef with basic APBA. But we'll get to that. Alrighty, Didi Gregorius. Facing Clayton Kershaw. No outs. Bottom of the second. Dodgers up 1-0. Uh, foul ball. 2-2. Two, two. Doubles are good. That is a 7. Get it in the light. That's a 7. Uh, grade A pitcher. 7. Single to right. So Gregorius leads off. With a base hit, Gary Sanchez comes up to the plate. We need to change the charts to runner on first. Right there. Rah. Sanchez set to go. Kershaw kicks and delivers. Two, three is a 12. Double play, unless it's a W pitcher based on balls. Kershaw is not a W. X, Y, Z. Double play, four, six, three. Four, six, four, six, three. Back to bases empty. Starlin Castro is going to be at bat. 
facing Clayton Kershaw, two outs, bottom of the second. 6 3 31. Right there, 31. As fly out the center field. Right down all there. Fly out center field. Some more likely roles that you're going to see a lot, but they're almost always the same result. Uh, 30 is a fly out to left field, 31 a fly out to center field, 32 a fly out to right field. Remember those three. There may be modifiers where a K pitcher it's a strikeout, an X pitcher it's a strikeout, a Y pitcher it's a strikeout, but by those three results are always going to happen. 30 is a fly to left, 30, 31, and 32. Fly to left, fly to center, fly to right. Uh, along with 14 being a walk, unless it's a double Z pitcher or a sing single Z pitcher, sometimes it's only two balls and you re-roll. Uh, 13 is a strikeout. I've never seen an R pitcher, so an R-rated pitcher with two outs. Uh, almost never going to happen. 13 is a strikeout. Look and make sure, but 13 is a strikeout. That's two innings. Guys, that is how you play APBA Basic. Now, the thing that I do not... The, my one beef, I think, with Basic. My one beef has got to be base stealing. That is how it happens. Right there. Guy rolls an 11 against a grade B pitcher with bases empty. Single to left. Batter steals second on first pitch of next batter. Charge a strike to the batter. There is no choosing to steal like there is in other games. This is an APBA video, not going to mention names. Um, you are able to, of course, you're able to steal in the master game. Um, there is no um, intermediate level of the game. A lot of different hybrids have been created. There are a few really good um, forums. The one that comes to mind is a Delphi forum, APBA, BTL, Between the Lines. A lot of great guys on there. Uh, a lot of good explanations of stratomatic stuff, not only baseball, but the football and the soccer and the basketball and the golf and the saddle racing. And uh, it, it seems, it, I've only been with them for about three weeks or so, but they seem like a really good forum. Very helpful, very informative, so check that out also. Um, APBAGames.com and they have a Yahoo storefront. Um, you can order every single season. More limited with football, but you can, baseball you can order any season. They have them. If you want to replay 1932, they got it. If you want to replay 1958, they got it. Uh, 1976, they got it. Uh, 1914 they got it um, so you, you do that is one plus with APBA huge selection um, one word of warning at a very high pricing point as compared to other games but for what it's worth I mean I got this the basic game along with the master version of the game which is basically just another book and an instruction book on how to use it um, but I got all this and the uh, master version of the game and I also got a greatest teams of the past um, number four which included the 1905 Giants and the 1911 Philadelphia Athletics and also my 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates we are family and the total for all of that 20 teams there, the championship teams for 2017 with this game, I'm going to put right at about $100. Um, so even out of the gate, it's a slightly higher pricing point than other games. It's a great game. It really is. It is a good game. It's a very good game. I enjoy playing it. Just the mechanics of reading the smaller cards and using the two dice takes me back to playing football when I was in my teens and 20s. So enjoy playing this baseball game. So I wanted to bring that to you guys. Um, I really hope that um, I was able to uh, lay it out there for you concisely, and I hope it was a good enough demonstration. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. 
I hit the little dinger bell thingy next to the word subscribed so that way anytime content is uploaded to the channel you'll be one of the first to know guys again thank you very much this is contrary to popular belief stratomatic delaware saying guys have a wonderful evening roll 66 is keep on rolling the devil made me do it